Hi guys, this is Pavel for MeasureSchool.com and today's topic is Product Performance Analytics. Product performance data is part of enhanced e-commerce data which GA allows us to collect. Let's have a look today on what we can see above what is in standard reporting. So I'm in the Product Performance Report tab which is under Conversions and e-commerce and this is where we are. So if you've been using this report only with this a horizontal tab called summary you've always seen mostly business data which means product revenue unique purchases quantity and a couple of more metrics but where the magic happens when using product performance data is in a different tab it requires to click the shopping behavior tab which is here and then we start seeing completely different data I would call it we are able now to see the full product journey. So let me show you and explain what the metrics are we able to see there. So first of all is product list views. What do we mean by that? It's good to mention that all of the metrics which are available in this report are tied to product. To particular one SKU, which then can be grouped either to product category or product brand. So let's explain what product list view is. The information about product being viewed in a product list is sent in the exact moment of product being viewed in product category page. Right now I'm in a Google merchandise store into which Google Analytics data we are looking at and if I go to any category which in this case is lifestyle and bags and I see the list of four products this is exactly the moment when the shop is sending to Google Analytics data that these four particular products has been viewed in a product list. So this is so-called a first product impression. If I scroll down a bit at this particular moment we send information okay these four products have been viewed in a product list so this is the explanation of product list view uh, then there is a product detail view this one is i guess a little bit more clear uh, and we send this information to google analytics in a moment that product detail page was viewed which is exactly right now i clicked there so this was the second metric available there once we collect the data this is important to mention if you see the zeros here it means that you don't have implemented enhanced e-commerce data now so far so another metric is product adds to basket this one is i guess pretty clear so every time we add a product to basket which can be for example right now we send information okay this product was added to basket another step available there is remove from basket this one is i guess pretty clear every time we remove product from basket the information is sent to google analytics then there is a product checkouts this one might not be that clear in ideal way the information about product being in checkout should be sent exactly at the moment of a customer journey in which we are right now it should be sent in a moment where we normally or in the part of the website where we normally inputting delivery details payment details personal data and so on so this is the moment where we should send the information about product being in checkout so this is exactly the step and then there is a metric unique purchases don't mismatch this metric unique purchases with quantity this is something that is available in that default report summary so this is both unique purchases and quantity what's the difference between them let's look on the example of product number one which is next hello doorbell usa let's assume that there is a one transaction in which this product was purchased three times so it will be counted three times into quantity but only once in unique purchases so unique purchases is basically a volume of transactions in which particular product was included so going back to shopping behavior it makes sense why we have it here because it's then used in the the two upcoming calculated metrics first of them is basket to detail rate which is a ratio between product adds to basket and product detail views which is 61 percent for this product it can be also named as add to cart rate it's still the same calculation then there's a last metric which is called buy to detail rate and is the ratio of unique purchases and product detail views this can be also named as product conversion rate so this is why we have here unique purchases as a metric 
So to sum it up for both of, of these two metrics, basket to detail rate and buy to detail rate, we use product detail views as denominator and as nominator, we have product adds to basket or unique purchases. Now let's go to interpretation of, of these great metrics. I really love them. Now we're able to see the full product funnel. And what this metric tells us, it can help us to identify whether the product performance is like so-so, which means somewhere in the middle, or it's great products in terms of basket to detail rate and buy to detail rate, and we should promote them more, or the product isn't performing well at all. Important to remember from this video is that the data available here in this report, it doesn't tell us what is the problem with particular product, but where the problem is in a customer journey. So let's have a look on that. I will sort this report by product detail views, which tells me, okay, these are top viewed product. And now where would I start? I want to see how my top products in terms of product detail views perform followingly in the funnel. So I'm looking on a basket to detail rate and then buy to detail rate. And exactly looking on the product number one, I can see, okay, this is my top view product. It has slightly below average basket to detail rate but very low buy to detail rate. And this tells me, okay, there's probably something wrong with the, with the product. And when looking on that ratio numbers, I can see that, okay, this is like so, so slightly below, but this one is really, really low. So there's probably something wrong in checkout with the product. There can be many reasons for that. And as we said, this data doesn't tell us what exactly the problem is, but where the problem is. So checkout is the place where we should start investigating what can be wrong with the product. Just a couple of examples, what can go wrong with the product in a checkout. It can be, for example, very cheap. And then comparing to the product price, it can be very expensive delivery price or the product isn't shipped to particular country and so on and so forth so there can be many reasons for that very similarly is the second product quite good or not that good there's even even wrong basket to detail rate so if we find something with a high below the average basket to detail rate the product itself isn't e even attractive for adding a product to cart right so this is what number tells us again as in the case of a low buy to detail rate there can be many reasons for product not being added to cart. It can be expensive, so the price is the reason. It can be wrong product description, missing important data. It can be product pictures quality, depending on the product category. For example, for a fashion, that can be really a good reason not to buy it if I can't see product properly on the website. So again, this is probably something wrong on a product detail page. I would say either price or missing important information. As we don't want to look only on a low performing product, we also should try to look for something that, that performs very, very well. So if I would scroll down a bit, I can see that for example, line number eight, which is Nest Hello Doorbell, has twice as uh, average basket to detail rate, 61%, and also buy to detail rate is very, very decent, 40%. So this is something I would be interested in, and, and I would look for, okay, what's what's so special about that product? Again, it can there can be many reasons for that, but it tells me, okay, this product performs very, very well. What can I do with that? It's very simple, actually. Start to promote that product, probably trying to put it on a homepage or promote it more in your product performance budget, spend more money on it, and see whether whether these important metrics will still keep that high or it will decrease in time but still will be above the average. So this is how to work with this data. Try to look for the very low performing products and try to investigate what to do with them, what can be improved, what can be the reason why they are performing so, so low. On the other hand, uh, when you find the products which are, for example, very good with, with basket to detail rate and very low buy to detail rate, there's probably something wrong in a checkout. If we find something with a very low basket to detail rate but decent traffic, there's probably something wrong even on a product detail page, as we said, for example, missing the, the important product information. Or if we find something with very decent basket to detail rate and very decent buy to detail rate, try to promote these products more. Or at first place, try to understand why they are so great. So that was it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and try to remember these data doesn't tell us what's exactly what wrong or, or great with the product, but where in the product journey it is. So hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. All right, Pavel, thanks for this great information. If this video helped you out in any way, then we'd love for you to hit that like button. And if you want to find out more about Google Analytics, then check out this playlist right over there where we have many different topics waiting for you. Now, from everybody here at Measure School, happy measuring.